Here I'm going to show you how to make a nice visual interface for viewing data for specific time periods. So let's say that we only want to view this month's data. We click that and the data is loaded right here. Nothing else. Or what if we want to go to a last month's data? Then that's going to be loaded right here. As much as we have all the way down the worksheet. And this requires no code, no programming, no VBA. And I'm going to show you how to do this for whichever time periods you require, not just these four here. And I'll show you how to do it for newer versions of Excel as well as older versions of Excel. And I'll even show you how to make these in nice little rounded corners here. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. All right, it is time to lift the veil and see what we've got here. Let's get the View tab visible and bring back some grid lines, headings, and formula bar. And it's already looking a lot more basic. And let's bring that guy back here. And how about another set of data over here? Now, this other set of data over here is for older versions of Excel. In your final version of this file, you're not going to want to have both of these here, the old version and the new version, but in the downloadable file, both of them will be there, so you can use whichever one you want. Now, to get this to work correctly, I'm going to be combining a lot of different topics in this tutorial, and some of them are rather complex. But thankfully, I've made tutorials on almost all of those topics, and I'm going to be putting links to those tutorials in the description for this video. So if you're ever lost, just check the description of the video, and you're probably going to find a link to something that is explained in a lot more detail. But let's go ahead and check out the other part of this, which is the raw worksheet. This is where our data is stored. So we have all of our data on another worksheet, and then we're just going to display it on the Dashboard tab. Now what I'm going to do is to leave these guys here for reference and let's create two new worksheets. How about we call this one R2 and we'll call this one D2. And we will just move these guys to the right. And let's go ahead and get all of our raw data. I'm just going to copy it and paste special values, Alt ESV, to get that guy over here. And this is what your raw data is going to look like when you import it into Excel. Now, the very first thing that you want to do when you have your data here, this is very important because we are dealing with dates. Notice, let me zoom in a little bit, how the date times look here. This is Excel's date serial format, if you're not familiar with it. But once we format it as a date, it's going to look like this, like an actual date that we can read. And since we are working with dates and we want to get ranges of them, you want to make sure, at least for how I'm doing it in this tutorial, that you do not have a time associated with this date. So if we have a time, let's say equals now, and I hit enter, there's a lovely time, and let me control C, Alt E S V, enter that. So it is a date and not a formula anymore. And if I go up here now and switch that guy to a general, you are going to see the decimals, and the decimals represent the time. But since that causes us issues, you can use the trunk function to truncate it, T-R-U-N-C. And then select that, hit enter, no more decimals. Now I have already done that with all of this data, so once you do that, just copy this down for all of your dates, then control C to copy it, Alt, E, S, V, enter to paste special values. And that changes your formulas into the visible values. So that's the very first important thing because it will cause you so many headaches when you don't understand why all of your dates aren't showing. And then you realize it's the annoying little date serial guy right here, the decimals for it. So we get rid of those. We have some nice boring dates. And you can format this guy as much as you want. It doesn't matter. We're going to format the dashboard worksheet anyway. But we want to change this into a table. So hit Control T or go to Insert Table. Make sure you've clicked inside the data set before you do this. And check My Table Has Headers. Please have headers on your table. You always want to have column headers. It will make your life so much easier. Hit OK. And we have a nice table. Now click in the table. Go to Table Design and rename this guy. Do not leave it at Table 3. 
give it a good name. And I have named mine Table Raw. I'm going to call this one Table Raw 1 because the original one on the Raw worksheet is called Table Raw. So this is for the raw data. And now that you have that set up, it is time to go to the dashboard and have some fun. First up, let us make some small columns over here. It's going to help us tremendously with having a nice setup. And uh, let us zoom in and start off with creating our date intervals. So what we require for that is a little table. Let's build it here for now. We want a column for the period, a column for the start, and a column for the end. And now think about the periods that you want here. I'm going to do one for this month, one for last month, one for this year, and one for last year. And all that we are going to do here is to use some formulas to get the date for this month. So the start date of this month, the first of this month, and then the end of this month, or today's date. And then for the last month, we're going to do the same thing. Get the first day of the last month and the last day of the last month. And for this year, the first day of this year and today's date. Last year, first day of last year, last day of last year. And you want this to update. So if you open this workbook in one year, these dates will all be different than they are right now. So we do not hard code anything in here. Now let us start with the easiest one first. Today's date equal today. Open and closing parentheses, enter, and there we go. And every day that we open the workbook, it will be today's date right here. Now how do we get the first day of this month? you can always just revert to the date function. With the date function, you individually create the year, the month, and the day. You could use the today function and then get the year from that. So year, today, and then do the same thing using the month function with today, close it up, and then for the day, just put in a one. And then you would get 3-1-2021. And these are USA date styles. So basically, if you're anywhere else in the world, it's going to look a little different. It'll be 1-3-2021. So this is the default way that I'm going to say revert to this if you forget the next trick I'm going to show you. But the next way to do it is pretty darn cool, I think. It is to use the end of month function. So E O. And there we have end of month. It returns the serial number. Remember, that's how Excel stores dates in the weird, funky serial number. So it returns the serial number of the last day of the month before or after a specified number of months. So we use the end of month function. What is our start date? Our start date is today. And how many months do we want to change it by? Well, we want to go back one. So minus one. And what does that do? It gets us the very last day of last month. So how do we get to the first day of this month? You simply add one. Because the date serial number, one, is a day. So you add one to add one day. I hit enter. And there we go. 3-1-2021. A much shorter version of the formula. And so it's a bit easier to manage, but it requires remembering how this works, of course. So that's why I say the longer method may be easier to remember a year from now, but I think this is a pretty cool little way to do it. Now, how about the start and the end for last month? This one's going to be really easy. We just copy this guy, paste it in, and instead of going back one month, we go back two months. That's all that we change, that number right there, hit enter. And there we have our lovely date serial format. Let us make it readable. So short date. There we go. And how about the last day of last month? Well, paste that guy in and remove the plus one from the end of it. And of course, a little bit of formatting is going to be nice. There we go. So the end of month function is quite helpful and it makes it easy for us to manage this. Now for the next guys, let's go ahead and do the easy one first equals today, because this year can only go up to today. And for the first day of this year, let's go back to the date function and then year and then today for this year and the month. Very simple. The first month, the day, the first day. And there we go. 
and for last year almost exactly the same. So dates can be tricky, but thankfully they generally follow a pattern. So year, all we do is go right outside that and subtract one from that number, and then we get 112020. And for the last one that we are going to do today, just 12 and 31. And now we have our four date intervals, which will be changing every single day, every single month, every single year. And you add as many date intervals as you want here. And take some time to make sure that you have these formulas right, because everything else that we do after this is going to be based on these formulas. Now let's go ahead and move this to its future home. It is going to be in L5 right here. Now I only know this because I've already built the other spreadsheet. When you are building your spreadsheet from scratch, you're going to be moving things around a lot and making a lot of changes to it. But I know that this guy is going to go over here. And next up, it's time to build our lovely little drop-down menu interface over here. In C3, I want select period. And let's make that guy 16. And E3, I'm going to put some placeholder text there for now. And let's make a nice little interface here. This is actually terrifically easy. So background color right here. Now how about those rounded corners? Go to Insert, Illustrations, Shapes, and do a rounded rectangle. So I believe it's this little guy right here, rounded corners rectangle. And all you do is draw it over this. And then we go up here to Shape Format and Shape Fill, No Fill. Shape Outline, go to Weight, and make it really thick. And use the arrow keys to move the guy up a little bit and over until it looks nice. Then click E3, go to the Paint Bucket, go to No Fill, and check that out. You've got rounded corners and everything. And when we go to the View tab and we take the grid lines off, it looks really quite nice. And Headings and Formula Bar. And then there. So it's really that simple to get that nice little look right there. But now let's make it work. This guy is going to be a drop-down menu. But how do we get the drop-down menu to have the values in it? Well, we're going to get the values from over here. But we want it to be dynamic so we can add values to this. So what we do is we turn it into a table. So click inside of it and hit Control t or Insert Menu Table. Make sure you have headers. My table has headers. OK. And go to Table Design. Give it another name, so this one will be table periods, but I'm going to put one here because I've already got table periods. And for the data validation, click in here, let's delete that, hit Alt D L, or go to a data, and it's very tiny right now, data validation right here. And then for allow, click this, go to a list, click inside of source. And then just click the column that has your periods. Do not click the header, just the values that you want to appear in the drop-down list. Hit OK. And now we have some values. But how about we center those guys and make it look a little bit better. So go to the Home tab, center it here. And how about Vertical Align Center or Middle Align. And maybe we will make them a little bit bigger as well. How about 14 or maybe 12. You can spend a lot of time on the formatting. But now we have a nice little drop-down menu. And if we go to add another value to it, how about red? And we go over here, red has been added. Perfect. Exactly what we want. So let's back that up and get red out of there. And now it's for the next part. How do we figure out which one of these start and end values we want to use in order to filter our data? Well, we've got a drop-down menu over there. We've got a table over here. It's time for a VLOOKUP. So I'm going to label this as USE, this one as START, and this one as END. And here we have just a regular VLOOKUP. So what is our lookup value? Uh, this right here. What's our table array? Uh, this right here. And index number. Well, I want the START for this one. Column index number 1, 2. So we put a 2. Range lookup, false. 
And for the next one, we do the same thing. Equals, oops, equals VLOOKUP. Lookup value, table array. I promise that if you find VLOOKUPs difficult now, if you input them a few hundred times, you will no longer find them difficult. <laughs> and then false for exact match. And of course, I'll have a link to a video for VLOOKUPs in the description of this tutorial if you'd like to see some more examples of them. And let's go ahead, I'm gonna do Control C and then select these and Alt E S T to copy paste the formatting. That was Alt E S T, but I do not want the background there. So I probably should not have done that. There we go. And let's go ahead and make these guys bold. Now, how about we make it so that we can hide them whenever we want, select the three columns, go to the data worksheet and click group. Now we have this little icon right here, a little minus sign, click it and it's gone. Click the plus and it's back. So we can hide the data on the same worksheet really nice and really easily. So it is time to finally put all of this together to show the data. And we are first going to do it for new versions of Excel because it is so, so much easier. And what we want to do is to have our data display right down here. So let's go over to our raw data worksheet and let's copy this guy, control C, go over here. Where do we want it? Let's go C7, do Alt E S V for copy paste special values, enter. That way we don't carry the formatting. Control B for bold and a little bit more spacing. And here we go. The best thing, I think, to be in new versions of Excel. We are going to use the filter function. Equals filter. Now the array, that is what do we want to show here? Well, we want to show all of our raw data, but only data that meets the right criteria. But the array is going to be for all of the data. So go over here, select the table. We can actually just select in here and hit control shift down to select all of it. And you'll notice up here in the formula bar, it says table raw one. You want it to say the name of the table. And of course you could just type that in by hand. So you don't have to go over here and select it. We could have, and I probably should have just done that, gone equals filter and then type table raw. And we see the name of our table right here. So that makes it really easy to use that. And now for our criteria, this may look a little bit confusing, but I have a tutorial that shows you exactly how to do this. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. We want to make criteria that says, hey, I only want the values from that table that are within the dates that we want. So we do an open parentheses. We go over here to our table where our dates are. And let's go to the top there. Select right under the header. So click one cell right under the header and hit control shift down. And you'll notice that we have a lovely table structure to reference right there. Then go to the end of it and put a greater or equal sign right there. We're going to be making a comparison. We want these dates to be greater than or equal to the date by which we want to filter. The use start date right here. Then we close up that argument. We put a multiplication sign and we use our next criteria. Open parentheses. We go back over here. We select the date column one more time. This time I'm clicking the very bottom of the table. Nothing else at the bottom of it. Control shift arrow key up. Then I'm going to hold shift one more time and arrow key down. So it does not select the header. And here we want it to be a less than or equal to the end date. This guy right here, close that up. And we now have the full criteria for our filter function. It's two chunks, this chunk right here, and then uh, this chunk right here, and they are multiplied together. And then we can put something if empty if we want. So if there are no values, I'm going to just put quote, quote, so nothing, and close it up. And let me go over here before I hit enter so we can see. And when I hit enter, all of the data filtered for the date fills in automatically.
look at that. And before we test it out, let's make these dates actually look like dates so that we can verify that everything is good. A short date here, and how about a currency right here? And now let's go for this month. There we go. Now close up this guy right here. Take away some of these ugly grid lines, formula bar, and heading. You're good to go. Now how about this raw tab? Maybe you don't want this. Go ahead, right click it. It's off the screen right now, but right click the tab and click hide. Now let's go back to one we are working on, D2. There we go this month, uh, last month, and any other date interval that you have here. It is as easy as that. And if that seemed complex and you're wondering why I said that was easy, well, <laughs> I'm about to show you how you do it for the previous versions of Excel now. Thankfully, everything is going to stay the same except for the formula. So uh, let's bring back the interface, shall we? Bring that guy back. All right, here we only have one formula. It is really just so amazing, it's great. I love these formulas in the new versions of Excel. But life is not so easy in older versions. So let me copy this, go over here, and put this guy in P7. All right, this is where we're gonna put the new guy. I am not going to write this one out by hand. I have an entire tutorial on what I'm about to put right here, and of course there's a link to it in the description of this video. What I'm going to do is copy this guy and show you what you need to change. The other tutorial, the whole tutorial, is just about explaining how, how this guy works. So let me zoom in a little bit, and you'll see how gnarly it is. It is this. Look at all the functions that we use. If error, index, small, if, row, anything else, looks like it's it. But of course we use row three times. Why do we do that? Oh, it's a lovely little confusing reason. But the really, really important thing here when you have this is that this part right here, let me get it all in one line here. This is the same as the criteria that we made for the filter function. So we selected the date column in the table and we said, hey, I want you to be greater than or equal to our, where are we? The date that is right here, the start date. And then we multiplied it by the same thing, the date column that is less than or equal to the end date and some other things in this formula that you need to make sure that you update the location of the raw data. Here it is, table raw, and then over here we have another table raw, and this is very important, this row reference right here needs to be the same row as, let me get the raw data back, right click unhide, so that row reference, row A2, needs to be the starting row for your raw data. That's really kind of confusing why you have to do that, and I'm not going to explain it here because it is complex, but the tutorial that I link to in the description of this video explains that thoroughly. There are actually going to be many links in the description of this video, and all of them will help you more thoroughly understand the little topics that I cover here. Now, let's finish this guy up. You've learned what you need to change anywhere you see table raw, and the date column references, and then make sure that A2 is the same row as the starting row for your raw data. Now the last thing is this right here. This one, after all of the rows, it refers to the column from the raw data that you would like to return. So if you want to get sale ID from the first column, you have one there. For type, we would change one to two, for manufacturer, two becomes three, and so on, all the way down. And what we are going to have to do in just a moment as well, notice that this formula 
It is not so versatile. It doesn't just update in a nice way like the other one. We are going to have to copy this down for as many rows as there can possibly be data returned. So we still only have one row of data, but shouldn't we have more? Yes, we should have the same number as this guy over here. So what do we have to do? Grab all of these now and copy them down. So we can copy them down to here. And there we go, like magic. But if we only copy them down to here, then when we go over here, and instead of last month, we choose a last year, it is not going to go below where we copied it. So we want to grab this guy and copy it to a point far, far, far below anything that can be returned. So go down, copy, I don't know, a thousand, a hundred thousand. Whatever will cover all of your entire data set, but not slow down your worksheet too much. Just copy it there. And since we have the if error that surrounds all of that, the if error returns nothing if there is an error. So it looks like there is nothing here, even though we have a nice big scary formula. And that one is truly scary, by the way. If you want to be scared of a formula, be scared of this one, not the VLOOKUP. And then, of course, go ahead and format the date time as a date and format the price as currency or whatever you want. You can left align these guys a little bit and spend a long time getting the formatting exactly how you want. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.